Hey everyone, welcome back to Chicago. Lisa Martin here with John Furrier. We're live with theCUBE at Ansible Fest 2022. This is not only Ansible's 10th anniversary, John, but it's the first in-person yeah. event in three years. About 14 to 1500 people here talking about the evolution of automation, really the democratization yeah. opportunities yeah, that and Ansible is and providing. And this segment's going to be great. CUBE alumni are back and we're going to get industry perspective on the automation journey, so it should be great. It will be great. We've got two alumni back for the price of one. Scott Kinane joins us, Director of Worldwide Automation at Kindrel, and Nelson Shu is back as well, Product Marketing Director at Red Hat. Guys, great to have you back on the on the live cube. Oh, thank you for thank having you. us, and, and you know, it's really great to be back here live and in person, and, and you know, get a chance to see you guys again. Well, and also you get you get such a sense of the actual Ansible community here, yeah. and, and it's only a fraction of them that are here. But people are ready to be back. They're ready to collaborate in person. And I always can Im imagine the amount of innovation that happens at these events, just like off the show floor, people bumping into each other and go, "Hey, I had this idea. What do you think?" Um, Scott, it's Wait. been just about a, a year since Kindrel was formed. Talk to us about the last close to a year and what that's been like, especially yeah, as the world has been so topsy-turvy. <laughs> <world's> yeah, exactly, <laughs> topsy-turvy, people getting back to working in person and, and everything else, but you know, it, it, you know, throw on that what we've done in the last year, taking Kindrel, um, you know, outside of uh, being a, a part of uh, IBM, right, in our own company at this point. Uh, you know, and, and you know, you hear a lot of our executives and, and a lot of our people when we talk about it, like, oh yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a $19 billion startup, we got freedom of action, we can do all these different things, but you know, one of the ways I look at it is, we are a $19 billion startup, which means we've yeah. got a lot of companies out there that are trusting us yeah. to, no matter what change we're doing, continue to deliver their operations, do it flawlessly, do it in a way so they can continue to service their clients effectively, uh, and, and don't break them. And, and so that, to me, you know, the way we do that, and the way I focus on that is automation. And Ansible's obviously core to our strategy getting there. Yeah, and I'd like to get your thoughts too because we're seeing a trend, we've been reporting on this, with the cloud growth and the scale of cloud mm -hmm. and distributed computing going cloud native, the automation is the front and piece center of all the conversations. Automate this, make yeah. developers go faster. And with the pandemic, we're coming out of that pandemic view, post pandemic with, large scale automation system architecture, a lot more like architectural conversations and customers leaning on new things. Yeah. What are you seeing in this automation uh, framework that you guys are talking about? What's been the hot um, playbook or recipe or, <laughs> or architecture <laughs> to, you know, to play on words there? But I mean, this is kind of the, the key focus. Y yeah, I mean, if you, um, uh, one of the things that I come with customer comp um, talks I've been pulled into a lot recently, have all been around thinking about security, right? A lot in terms of security and compliance. I, think, I mean, think about the world environment as a whole right here, everything that's been going on. So, so people are, are conscious of how much energy that's being used in their data centers, right? And people are conscious of how secure they are, right? Are they, you know, the, their end customers are trusting them with data, information about them, right? And, and they're trusting us to make sure that those systems are secure to make sure that you know, all that is taken care of in the right way. And so you know, that what's hot? Security and compliance, yeah. right? What can we do in the energy space, right? Can we do things to, to help clients understand better their energy consumption as, as you know, especially as we get now in Europe to the winter months, can we do things there that'll help them also um, be better in that space, right? And reduce their costs. And a lot more cloud, Rails obviously is you know, right yes, there. You got and Prosa cloud. and you got now Ansible. They're kind of there to help the customers put it together at scale. This has been the big conversation. Last year, remember, it was automate, 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 right? <laughs> this year it's automation everywhere uh, in every piece of the, uh, the landscape. Edge has mm -hmm. been big discussion. Tomorrow we'll hear about event driven stuff. This is kind of a change of focus and scope. Can you like share your thoughts on how you see how big this is in terms of the, the, the customer journey? In terms, I'm sorry, in terms, in terms of, of their architecture, how they're rolling out automation. Yeah, their yeah, view? so, so um, in terms of their rolling out, arch in terms of them consuming architecture, right, yeah. and the architecture, or sorry, consuming automation, yeah. and rolling out the architecture for how they do that. Um, you know, again, it, to me, it's, it's, a lot of it's been focused around how do we do this in the most secure manner possible? How do we deliver the service to them in the most secure manner possible? How do they understand that, it, that they can trust the automation uh, and it's doing the right things on their environments, right? So it's not, you know, we're not pushing out or, or yeah. you know, it's not making bad policies. And they're leaning it's, on it's you guys not being, more. It's not being putting malware out there, right? At the same time, we're doing different things. And so they really rely on, on 
uh, our customers rely on us to really help them with that journey. I think a, a big part of that, um, with Kindra as such a great partner and so many customers yeah. trusting them, is the fact that they really understand that enterprise. And so as, as Scott talks about the security aspect, we're not just talking to the IT operations people, right? We're talking across the enterprise, mm -hmm. the security, the infrastructure, and the automation around that. So when we talk about hybrid cloud, we talk about network and security, edge is a natural conversation yeah. to that. Because absolutely at the edge, network and security automation are critical, otherwise how are you going to manage just the size of your edge as it grows? Yeah, and, and we've been, and that's another area that we've been having a, a lot more conversations with clients on is how do you do automation for IOT and edge-based devices, right? We, you know, traditionally, data center, yeah. cloud, right, kind of the core pieces of where we've been focusing on. But, I, you know, recently I've been seeing a lot more uh, opportunities and a lot more companies coming forward saying, you know, help us with the network space, help us with the IoT yeah. space. We really want to start getting to that level of automation in that part of our environments. And what are some of the key barriers that customers are coming to you with saying, help us overcome these so that they can, you're smiling, <laughs> so that they can, <laughs> can obviously attract and retain the right talent and also be able to determine what processes to automate to extract the most value and the most ROI for the organization. Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's, that's an interesting, the ROI conversation is always an interesting one, right? Because when you start having that with customers, the, some of the first things they think about, or the, first, the, the natural place people go is, oh, labor takeout. I can do this with less people, right? But it, that's not the end all be all of automation. In fact, you know, my personal view is that's you know, maybe the, 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 the bottom 30%, right? That's kind of, then you have to think about every, the value you get above and beyond that standard operations, standardized processes, right? How are you going to be able to do those faster? How's that enabling your business, right? What's all the risk that's now been taken out by having these changes codified, right? By having them done in a manner that is repeatable, scalable, and, and, and really gets them to the point of, um, you know, what their business needs from an operational standpoint. And extracting that value. Nelson, yeah. talk about the automation journey from your perspective. How have you seen that evolve uh, from your lens, especially over the last couple of years? Oh, uh, it's a great question. Um, you know, it's interesting because obviously our, all of our customers are at different stages of their automation journey. We have some that are just beginning looking at automation. They've been doing old scripts, if you will, the past. And then we have more that are embracing it, right, as a culture. Mm -hmm. So we have customers that are building cultures of automation, right? They have stand-ups, they have automation guilds. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a, of a, of a click. It's yeah, kind of, yeah. you know, uh, building up steam and that momentum. And then we have you know, the clients that Kindle works with, right? And they're very much focused on automation because they understand that they have a lack of resources, they don't have the expertise, they don't have the time to be able to deliver all this. Yeah. And that's really, Kindle really comes into effect to really help those customers accelerate their automation, yeah. right? And to that point, you know, we're doing a lot of innovation work with Kindle. Um, and we lean on them heavily because you know, they're willing to make that commitment as a partner, uh, both on the day-to-day the, the -day work that we do together, as well as forward looking at different architectures. Yeah. And, and the community aspect from our side internally has been tremendous in terms of us being able to expand what we'd be doing with automation and, and what AAP's been able to do with that community to get there, right? Yeah. Um, so to last month, um, we did about 33 million day one, day two operations through automation, right? So that's what we've done. If you look at it, you know, if I break it down, it's really, 80% of that's standard global process stuff that we bring to the table. 20% of that is what our, our account teams are bringing specifically to their clients based on their needs and what they need to get done, right? Um, you know, one of my favorite examples of, of, of this, right? We have a automation example out there for a, a client we've got in Japan, right? They tie, you know, they're, they're obviously concerned, you know, security compliance, everything else that we've been talking about. They're also concerned about resiliency, right? in the face of natural disasters. Yeah. So they took our automation, they said, okay, we're going to tie your platform to yeah. seismic data that's coming through. And we understand what seismic data is happening, okay, it's hitting a certain event, let's automatically start kicking off resiliency operations so we can be prepared uh, and thus keep serving our clients when that's happening, right? And that's not something like when you talk about a global team coming in and, and saying, you know, we're going to do all this, it's that community aspect, getting, the, getting the account focus, getting to that level, right? That's, um, really brings value to clients, and that's one of the, the use cases you know, that AAP's enabled us to do with the, A, with the uh, community approach we've got. Nelson, talk about this partnership. I think earlier when we were talking to Stephanie and Tom, 
the bottoms up Ansible community with top down kind of business objectives kind of come into play. You guys have a partnership where it's some game changing things happening because Ansible's growing, continuing to have that scope grow from a skill set standpoint, expand the horizons, more, doing more automation at scale, and then you got business objectives where people want to move faster in their, mm -hmm. in their digital transformation. So to me, it's interesting that this partnership kind of hits both. It does really hit both. I mean, um, you know, the community uh, cloud that Kindra has is so critical, right? Because they build that CACF architecture internally, but they follow that community mantra, if you will. And community is so important to us, right? And that's really where we find innovation. So together with what we were discussing about validated content earlier today, um, becomes critical to build that content, to really help people get started, right? Validated content, content they can uh, depend on and deliver, right? So that becomes critical. On the other side, as you mentioned, is the reality of how do we get this done, yeah. right? How do we mature? How do we accelerate? And without the ability to drive those solutions to them, to fix, if you will, the problems that the line of business has, well, if you don't answer those questions with the innovation, with the community, and then with the AP, it's, it, it does, it's got to all come together. Yeah, I mean, that community framework's are interesting. I think we hear a lot in theCUBE, you know, hey, let's do this, and, oh, sounds good, who's going to do it? Oh, <laughs> someone, who's the <laughs> operator? <laughs> so there's a little skills gap going on. There's also right. a transformation mm -hmm. in the roles of the operators in particular and the devs. So the DevOps equation is completely going to the next level. Right. And this is where people want to move faster. So you're seeing a lot more managed services, a lot more yes. services that's, I won't say so much top down, but more like, let's do it and here's a play to get it done. Right. Then backfill on the hiring, whether it's taking on a little bit of technical debt or going a little faster to get the proof points. Right, and I think one of the critical aspects is, you know, Ansible has its certified collections, right? And Oftentimes, I, we, we don't, I, don't, I meet with customers two, three times a week, right? There's not a single one that doesn't emphasize the importance of partners and the importance of certified collections, right? And Kindle is included in that, right? Because they bring a lot of those certified collections, use them, leverage them. It helps customers get a jump start, right? It's yeah. a few, well, it's their easy button, yeah. right? But they only get that and they value that because of the support that's there, yeah. Yeah. right? They get the and wins. Yeah, I was just, just, just adding on the certified collections, right? We, so, you know, it was, it was great to see uh, the hub come out with those capabilities because, you know, as we've gone through the last 12 months and, and change, one of the things that we focused more in on uh, is network devices, network support, right? And, and so, you know, some of the certified collections out there for Cisco, for F5, right? right? Some of those things we've been able to take back in and now build on top of with the expertise that we, we have in that space as right. well and then use that as a as starting point to deliver more value for our clients. How is Kindrel working together with, with Red Hat and with Ansible to help organizations, like you mentioned, Nelson, they're on, the journey varies considerably. Some are, are well on their way, others aren't. But for those to really start developing an automation first culture, we talk a lot about cultural shift. We talked about it this morning. You can feel the power of that community and driving it. But how do you guys work together to help companies and in any industry kind of really start understanding what an automation first culture is and then building it internally and getting some groundswell. Well, it's interesting, right? Um, one, of the, one of the things that really is, we found really helpful is assessments, right? So you have silos and pockets of automation, and that's that challenge, right? So to be able to bring that, if you will, automation community within an enterprise together, we often uh, go out and we'll do an assessment, right? an automation assessment, to really understand holistically how the enterprise could leverage automation, not just in the pockets, but to bring it together. And when they bring that automation together, they can share playbooks, they can share their experiences, right? And with Kindle and the, multiple, and the practices they have, right, they really bring that home from an industry perspective. They also bring that home, if you will, from um, a technology perspective, and they bring that together. So, you know, Kindle in that respect is the glue for our customer success. What's news, what's, what's the next big thing that you guys see? Because if this continues down the road, this path, people are going to get the wins, going to get the successes, the new beachhead, if you will, is established. You got the edge around the corner. What's next for you guys in the partnership? How do you see it developing? No, it's, <laughs> um, we're looking at <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. um, No, it's all good. Yeah. Um, so really, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier, and, and the, the automation journey, paralleled by innovation, right? 
Customers to today are automating. They're doing a great job. There's multiple tools out there. We understand we're not going to be the only tool in the shed. But Ansible can come in and integrate that entire environment. Yeah. And in a hybrid cloud environment, you want that there, right? I think what next is, obviously the hybrid cloud is critical. The edge is critical, right? And I think that you know, the needs and the requirements that Kindle hears that we have is kind of that future. And you know, we, we often, often in, in Red Hat, we talk about a North Star, mm -hmm. right? And when I work with partners like Kindle, we talk about the North Star where we want to get to. Mm -hmm. And that is the acceleration of automation. Mm -hmm. And I think both by the practical aspect of working with our customers and the innovation as partners, yeah. as yeah. business partners, technology partners will help accelerate that. Yeah. Scott, your I, perspective, I the bridge to the future is obviously hybrid and edge. Yeah. How are you bring your customers yeah, along? So, so we see, um, you know, when, we talk about my, when I talk about my automation strategy, automation strategy, right, it's about being automated, orchestrated, and intelligent, right? Kind of those, those three layers of the stack. Um, we've been building out a lot of work, what we would call our integrated AI ops layer for actionable insights, right? We've got a, you know, a, a goal to integrate that, and, and we have integrated into our automation service for how we're delivering uh, the whole package to our clients. Mm -hmm. So they can better see opportunities for automation, yeah. what's the best way to go about it, um, you know, what are, the, what are some of the, the issues they have, vulnerabilities they have in their environment, and really bringing it to them uh, in, in a real holistic manner. In fact, we, internally we call it our uh, F5 steering wheel, right, based on the, the racing thing, right? Because you think about this, the, the, the racing cars, F5, you know, they're right there, right? They got everything they need in front of them. Yep. So our goal has been to, to include that into our automation view and service and, and build that out, right? So that's one way we're doing it. The additional way is, is uh, through some announcements you probably heard, um, hopefully heard, in the last couple of weeks through something called Kindra Bridge, right? Kindra Bridge is more the digitization of, yeah. of the way we deliver services for our clients uh, to make it easier for them to consume and, and to, to make the barrier to entry for things like getting automation, getting it more in their environment, right? Lower as much as yeah. possible, right? So really, integrated AI ops, uh, Kindle Bridge, those are really the two ways we see it as, as uh, going forward. It's interesting, you know, we live through a lot of these different inflection points in the industry. Every time there's a big inflection point, there's more complexity that needs to be tamed. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you got innovation, if you had innovation coming, and you got the clients want to simplify yes. and tame the complexity. This is a big part of what you guys do. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, how do we, you know, most, when, our, when the clients come to us, right, like I said, one, it's about trust, they trust us to do it, because we can make it easy for them to not have to worry yeah. about that, right? Yeah. They don't have to worry about what it takes to secure the environment, manage it, run it, design it, build it for the, the cloud. We give them the ability, to, we give them the ability to focus on their core business while we do the stuff that's important to them. Which is absolutely critical, that you can't f emphasize trust in this relationship yeah. enough. I wish we had more time, guys. We're out of, you're going to have to come back. <laughs> I think that's basically <laughs> what this is boiling down to. <laughs> but thanks so much, guys, for talking with John and me about how Kindle and, and Ansible are working together, really enabling your customers to, to unlock the value of automation across their organization and really make some big business changes. We appreciate your insights All and right. your time. Fantastic. Absolutely. You know, Thank happy you to do it and happy to do it anytime. All, All right, right. our pleasure. Thank you so much. For our guests and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Chicago. This is day one of our coverage of Ansible Fest 22. Don't go anywhere. Our next guest joins us in just a minute.